All right. This season, many people gather around tables, right? We're all going to gather around tables, slabs of wood, sheets of glass, and other flat surfaces. But some of us are excited to sit around these tables while others dread this idea of the family gathering, right? And a lot of times, like family gatherings, they actually hold a connotation of pain or maybe like really tough conversations or um, maybe we grew up in a family where alcoholism was just taking over different people. And, um, you know, sometimes family gatherings hold awesome memories of laughter, um, but also sometimes our families aren't together anymore and our loved ones are far from us and it's just not feasible to be able to to gather in the same way anymore so uh, a lot of people that we meet have all of these kind of different mixed emotions about the table about family gatherings um but what if i told you that there's a table inside of a house and that house is you okay your body is a temple a house and you are roommates with the spirit of god dwelling within you and your roommate, right? Your family member, come on, your God, your priest wants table time with you. And how you commune with God at the table within you will affect every other table you sit at. I'm going to say that again, because I want you really to catch that. How you commune with God at the table within you will affect every other table that you sit at. If you want supernatural table time with your family, you first need to establish table time in you. Okay. King David writes this in Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. Your My soul will be satisfied as with fat, rich food. And my mouth will praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings, I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul clings to you. I just, I love that. Now catch this. This psalm that we just read, just a portion of it, right? It was written by a man who was hiding in a cave without a physical table to recline at. This is before he became king, right? A man hiding in a cave. David communed with God at the table in his own heart in the lowest times of his life, which allowed him to cultivate a royal table surrounded by sons and daughters at the best times. It was because of David's faithfulness at the table of his heart that his son, Solomon, think about the generational line, the legacy that David instilled into his family. Okay, Solomon would then set a table where the queen of Sheba became a believer in God's goodness. Why? Because Solomon understood the holiness and the excellence of the table. I don't think that David was in the the cave, hiding from his enemies, thinking one day my son will set a heavenly table as a testimony of God's goodness. And like David, do you realize that the table of revival that you cultivate, every single one of us on this call, that the table of revival that you cultivate within you will will lead to actual tables of, of revival around you? Okay. There are tables that the Lord wants to set for us, for people that still believe that they are enemies of God, who still feel like they are unworthy, who still feel like they don't have a place at the king's table. And God wants to give them a table in front of you. But that has to start within you. 
okay? These actual tables of revival will lead to multi, multi-generational tables of revival for your kids and your grandkids. And I'm just, this is a, a call, a declaration that will you not only make the table within you a holy place and a place that you sit at often, but also will you cultivate holy tables around you? Will you do that for your family? David later writes in Psalm 65, he said, blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. So right now in this moment, I want you to envision the table of your heart, right? We know that we are, we are a temple and your heart is like the table of showbread, the table of fellowship, Right. And on that table, there were stacks of bread. Right. Is the bread of fellowship. I want you to envision the table of your heart. Describe it. What does it look like? Is there bread on it? Is there wine on that table? Is it set for for meetings? Is there clutter on that table? What is on the table of your heart? Okay. Now I want you to consider what does table time with God look like for you personally? How often do you think God is calling you to the table of your heart? I know these are more introspective questions, and even this topic is very introspective, right? Um, But let's talk about it. And you can bring up any of the aspects any of the questions that we just went over, um, what what is the Lord bringing up for you through this conversation? Feel free to jump out. With uh, with the table time, is that kind of like like intimacy, like in, intimate time with God? Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like he calls me to that a lot. <laughs> um, every day, honestly. Mm. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a very important time to just be with him uh, at that table, and yeah, I definitely envision the table being very clean. Uh, Jesus at the head of the table. And it's like, Mm. I go and meet there with him, maybe with my son sometimes too, actually. Um, And just sit with him and just let him speak, you know? Amen. Um, I'll just be honest. I think there's times when the table of my heart is cluttered by even mission sometimes and i have to be intentional to say you know what this thing is good it's not that this thing is bad but it's it's actually on the table when it should be clear for something else and i think we all have to be aware of that that the table of your heart right what condition is it is it in right now I'll just I'll I'll be honest too. I'll say right now it's clean, but in in the past there's times where I feel like there's even candles on the table, and maybe I mm. I knocked one of those candles over and kind of burnt some of the cloth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna um go ahead, um, 
what, what, what I think about when I'm focused on sitting at the table with God is sitting with Jesus at the table during the last supper, but it's just mm -hmm. him and me. And he's telling me, this is my body. This is my blood. And just reenacting that with him one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. And it, I'm not thinking about the actual physical part. It's just sitting across the table with him and feel like I was there when he gave the last supper. Yeah. Come on, y'all jump out. Let's discuss this condition of your table of your heart. How often is he calling you there? What does it look like? You know, I think of that scripture that talks about he knocks on the door of your heart. If you open it, he comes in and sups. And so I think his table is always, his table is always bountiful, full of different varieties of things. And sometimes he just wants us to come and smell the flavors and, and uh, look at what he's prepared. Um, mm. But when you when you talked about bread, I kind of thought, I kind of had this thought, you know how you go to a restaurant and it, say for breakfast, especially, hmm. and you order whatever you're going to order, and then they give you, and what kind of bread would you like with that? And they, they give you about 10 different options, right? <laughs> yeah. And I thought, so that's what I thought. If I was going to set a table for someone else, would I give them, would I be prepared to offer different types of bread, like gluten-free or sourdough or pumpernickel or whatever? whatever yeah. somebody needs for that moment. Would I, would mm -hmm. I be flexible enough or, and listening enough, quiet enough to hear what kind of bread uh, they needed for that day? Mm. Amen. My tables, it's still the same. I come to that table, um, I had a vision during the come to the table series um, at the table and it was God, the father, the son and Holy spirit. And we were all holding hands at this table and the most endearing love was beaming out of the father's face. And they all looked the same, except for like the father was a little bit older. Jesus was a little bit younger and Holy spirit looked just like them, but he was kind of like translucent, I guess. And my heart coming to the table at times, like I know that when I come to the table, my heart can be chaotic sometimes in moments, but once I sit down at that table, like it's, it's just them. That's the place of peace. That's the place of rest. That is the, where all the worries of the world or anything else that's going on just kind of melt away and nothing is there, but them. And I love that table. <laughs> I I love that table because that is that is the only place that you can actually find complete complete rest. Yeah. But I was also thinking about what you were talking earlier about David and the legacy that he put down for Solomon and through his family, right? That legacy through generations through generations, and it got me thinking um, about my family. Like I had a Christian line of family members, um, all the way back to my great grandmother. And the table of her heart that she had set um, for my grandmother and then my grandmother for my dad and then my dad um, and the table of his heart for me. Now, I was thinking like, you know, there were some some things that I had learned that I had to unlearn, but the tables of their hearts were set uh, on Jesus and it made me think like we may get it wrong sometimes, but those tables, like people set those tables and I'm grateful um, for them. I always tend to say I'm a little jealous of people who don't have any kind of like preconceived notion about God um, when they come to the Lord and they don't have to strip away things that are that uh, may not be correct. But I am, I am at this moment, I'm thankful for them because it brought me to this place of where I am. Amen.
Amen. And then I wanted to to add to that. I've actually brought in like clutter to the table and I've actually seen the Lord, the Holy Spirit, Jesus take that clutter off of the table with me. It's almost like they said, okay, let, let's, let's take this off. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's clean this up a little bit. Um, and I've seen them work through me at that table. Amen. I know for me, when I think of coming to the table, I kind of like the first image that pops up in my head is like the last supper, you know, when Jesus sat down with his disciples, it was very intimate. Um, and I know they were able to just have just genuine loving conversations and he was able to pour himself out to his disciples. Right. And so sometimes, you know, sitting down with family at a dinner table might be the only time that we could have an intimate conversation because with the busyness of the day that we have with work and the kids' sports, that we just don't have the time to really sit down and have an intimate conversation. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of brings to my attention how important it is to sit down with the family and and for dinner or lunch or whatever it may be, just to have that intimate conversation and see what's going on in their lives. You know, sometimes you get we get so hungry that we can forget to have these conversations. But, you know, it's awesome to have these teachings that would bring a reminder, at least in my life, how important it truly is to sit down and have that conversation with my family that I normally don't get to have maybe throughout the week because of how busy we are. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's a, that's a good reminder for me. Amen. When I, when I think about coming to the table, I think about how strict my mother was about table manners. You know, chew with your mouth closed, push a napkin in your lap, your elbows off the table. <laughs> when I, when I think about coming to the table with our Lord, I hear him say, no, put your elbows on the table, lean in close, you know, like come close to me, get closer so you can hear what I say. Um, like he does away with all the structure and the rules and he just wants relationship and one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a freeing time like it's peaceful um, but it's free I can just be me with the father I don't have to put on a persona I don't have to be responsible um, I can just be open and honest I can be um, vulnerable um, it's a uh, you know it's just a it's just a joy feeling um, thought about that moment and you know the lord calls calls me often right like i think he calls all of us all the time to the table and do we heed that um probably not as often as we should probably if i'm honest more more so when i'm in crisis when life is in turmoil then then um you know i think that's like our go-to like lord help me in this situation Right, but when everything's going well, are we at the table? Am I at the table? Like, am I drawing from that relationship as much as I should? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I think I can always do better, right? But anyway, I just, I, I just think of that. That's what I think of when I think about coming to the table. I think sometimes my table, well, like lately. I feel like my table has been like because of where I'm at and what I'm going like not going through I'm not like going through anything I just do these things to myself right but like I feel like my table I've made it like a card table you know like a fold-up table type thing where I'm like all right cool guy that's enough intimacy we're leaving you know like 
I feel like sometimes my table is something that like I can pack up and it doesn't stay. And so mm. I feel like God's been like, no, like you deserve the big Oak pretty table, like leave it here and just come eat with me. Mm. Like quit, like quit trying to set up, like not set like your table where you set it pretty. Right. Like that's different, but like quit, like just folding the table up and putting it away. Like you don't have to do that. Mm. I think it's a great question even is what is your table made of? Right. There's so many different styles of tables. <clears throat> what does it look like? Why is it made of that? Is there a functionality reason? Um, and I know this is pretty like visual. This is like a visual experience with the Lord. Um, but I just invite you to sit with that. Um is it the table that he wants for you or is it one that you set up? Is it, you know, um, really, really good. Yeah. Travis, I think of this morning, there's a, there's a table set. Uh, <laughs> I just saw this picture as we've been talking. There's a table set with a birthday cake on it. Mm. And, uh, and he invited Royce to come to sit down and celebrate uh, the day that he created him. <laughs> and, and what a celebration he's having, just looking back at the masterpiece he created, him and, and his son Colt on the same day. Is, is that today? That's today. <laughs> come on. Happy birthday. Yeah. Come on. Happy birthday. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, everybody. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. This morning it's just a table of celebration. <laughs> he is so delighting in in uh, in what he made and and how that creation is just looking just like he wants it. Mm. Amen. I was actually thinking like my table goes with me wherever I go. I mean, if I sat on the ground for a picnic. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it's like the table's going to be wherever I am. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what if it what if it's a physical wood table. You know that part doesn't matter to me. I'm just thinking in my heart, the table I have within me and God's table, it it's travel worthy. It can go with me everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Well, um, let's have um, Leah. Would you pray into this? Absolutely. Oh, Abba, we just thank you that you've prepared a table for us, Lord God that we can come and we can sit at this table and we can just be loved. There's no, there's no doing at this table, Lord God, there's just being. Or we can listen to your voice. And sometimes we don't even have to speak, Lord. We could just sit in your presence because that is enough, Lord. Your very presence is is all consuming it is life. I pray that today that today and tomorrow and the week and the months and the years, Lord God, go by that we never get up from this table. Like Mephibosheth, Lord God, that we would sit at your table and our weaknesses would be under the table and they can't be seen because we are at the king's table. We thank you that you anoint our heads with oil at this table, Lord God. That you prepare feasts for us at this table, Lord. Sometimes you prepare feasts for us in the presence of our enemies at this table, Lord God. That we have the privilege of being lifted up by you at this table, Lord. I 
I pray that we would bring this legacy to our families, Lord God. And as my family has set the table of their hearts with you, Lord God, that we would do the same in our families. That they would be kingdom advancers from your table, Lord. And my children and Travis's children, and Bob's children and Alex's children and the future children to be had, Lord God, that we would teach them how to sit at this table, Lord God, not prepare this table, just to sit at this table, Lord God. Teach us how to sit at your table and not get up, Lord God. Mm. I thank you before the foundation of the world, the table was already prepared for us, Lord God. And I pray that you would show us and open our ears for when you're calling us to remember to look back at the table, Lord God, that we don't get up, but sometimes we lose focus, Lord God, that we would bring our focus back to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. That the fire of your eyes at this table, because it is purifying, Lord God, that we would allow our hearts to be purified at this table. Mm -hmm. I just praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father, that it was your will to have sons and daughters, Lord God. That you are our Abba, Lord. That we could cry out to you. Thank you for that privilege, Lord. For opening our eyes, for awakening us. We just bless you today, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Sorry, I cry Amen. all the time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs>